Welcome back, everybody. I know it doesn't look different, but I am cooking along right now with 32 gigs of RAM. Finally, it came in. So for the last couple of days, um, my RAM has gone between two towns. We'll say three days total. It's gone between these two towns every day. So twice a day, I get an update on my phone saying, hey, your RAM is at this distribution center. And then it would go from point A to point B, back and forth constantly. Well, this is after UPS actually delivered my RAM to the wrong state 15 hours away. Yeah, so it has been a joy there. Uh, don't worry about what's in the background. It's literally just, this is a derp video because I'm trying out my, uh, my RAM resources. Uh, let's see here. So I had a bad RAM stick and I thought I had it fixed and I'd actually got some cheaper RAM sticks. And, it, well, I thought it was the RAM port, the uh, your actual DIMM slot. Uh, DIMM is, if you look in your motherboard, you'll see four slots generally, and I thought I had a bad DIMM port, and I was really worried about that. Turns out it was two cases of just crappy RAM, or possibly overvolting. We'll see if something happens to one of these, 30, my, one of these 16 gig sticks, then we'll know it's actually the port, possibly overvolting. But, um... Everything feels much smoother. As of right now, I'm using about 6 gigs of RAM. And while I've been doing all these other videos, y'all, I've been running off a single 8 gig RAM stick. So I was getting actual uh, blue screens and black screens. And it was very interesting. I thought I had power voltage issues. I thought I had other hardware issues. I thought it was my GPU. I thought it was my CPU. I've done thermal paste on everything. It just, yeah, let's hop into it. So. This is the Seal Clubber. It's not the Sea Vixen. It is literally the Seal Clubber. I took it out last night for derping around. And yeah, um, did not do too well. Not going to lie. Not going to lie. I mean, I still got, I think, two kills with it. Just um, they're 18G missiles with 40 seconds of guidance time. You can still out turn them, but it sits at 8.7. And I stuck it right next to the Hair Giro 9. So the highest I can see is 9.7. So AV8s, and that's about the deadliest thing you're going to get besides the smart MiG-21 players. And it hurts my heart that they got nerfed, or getting nerfed. MiG-21s are my favorite jets in this game. Believe it or not, believe it or not. Um, you don't need 13 minutes of fuel. Believe me, I've done, tested this. So the red tops, 16 Gs, I'm sorry. You know, don't crucify me. It's got a lot of explosive mass. 40 G, 40 seconds of guidance time. You can launch them from very far away. Yeah. And um, if you look at the stat card, that 1100, it's not supersonic. Yeah, I don't know why they gave it a radar, but uh, bringing out the old Kai V1. What was that? Yeah, they're good missiles for uh, the BR it's at. And I think this is a down tier. It's a T1? Really? Didn't I pick up the T1? Oh, did I forget to get that? That's... No, I think I picked that up. That's worse than I am. He really got down tier. I'm not worse. That's better than I am. He really got a good down tier. Scimitar. Uh, okay, so it's a R2, Y2. Yep, that's the best one out of the uh, R2s. And if you guys are wondering what the R2s are, it was the Japanese version of the ME62s. R262s. And they performed so much better. Um, they took them away last year? 23, I think. And you had to have them grinded out already. Sorry, I'm bouncing around in my conversation, but um, there's three of them. Of course, the later one being the best one, flight model-wise. Um, they were supposed to perform exactly like the 262s, but they performed so much better. Uh, okay, so we're, we're in a, actually in a little bit of an up tier, I think. That T1, um, yeah, no clue what he's doing. We're gonna climb. There's almost nothing up here with decent radar missiles and the things that do, you just turn out of it, so. What is an H5? There's so much new stuff that's mad, so it's a bomber. Well, we're gonna look at that after this game is over. I've never seen an H5, but I don't play this a lot since they've added so much stuff. Uh, a lot of bombers this match. Could be good or bad. That's a prop plane. That's 5.7. If that's the T1 I'm thinking of, that is a 5.7, so, yeah. Look how fast we're going, look how quickly we've climbed. You're not supersonic. And the SAB 105 does not have flares, so, what, what is this thing? 
your agility is great in this. You can take a really massive amount of criticals and still uh, still hit stuff. Is he really going to climb? 40 seconds of guidance time. Is that enough? Is he headed straight towards me? Right now, I should start blocking. Now, if he's heading towards me, it's kind of bad because he doesn't have guns and I do not. And he gets really two crappy missiles. I want to say he's chasing the H5. Not for long. I'll save you, brother. That's what War Thunder's all about. Reds killing reds. Because technically red them, they're blue to themselves. Oh, I was cheated. I was cheated out of that. Oh, oh I was so cheated. You know what? That 163 will be a problem. SF9 would be a problem if I wasn't coming in from the top side. Oh, he's turning. He did the smart thing. He turned into me. Uh, not Turn that Mr. Seeker off. The game feels a lot smoother now. I have no clue what my usage is on uh, my RAM right the second while I'm in game. But, yeah. Yeah, my 2070 is not screaming at me right now. Not until it starts getting good heated up. My 2070 rages at War Thunder more than I do. And I actually, I got a refurbished 2070 uh, way back when. I think right before the pandemic, it was 2019. Is he smart enough to turn? No, he's not. We're just going to get behind him and point blank range a missile into him. Uh, I don't want to overshoot. He does have air brakes out, so... Oh, that's me getting killed. We're going to another match. Oh, I was actually going to get killed there. Killed by an A9B. How terrible is that? I mean, GR91. So, while the game is running, what am I using? So, roughly we're using about 6 gigs of RAM. So, when I had my two DIMMs in there with the one faulty DIMM, it would hit above 8 gigs of RAM and crash the system. I uh, did memory diagnostics on it because I was really afraid it was the motherboard. Which, thankfully, it's not. Um, do we need to do that again? You know what? We promised we'd look up and see what this H5 is. So, uh, if you're ever looking for a vehicle, go here. Type it in. It will look at your current tree you're at, but you can just hit enter. Y'all didn't see HH. That's H5. The Chinese version of the IO-28. Okay, yeah, I haven't played my Chinese tree in a little while, so we're not even going to worry about that. Uh, what do we want to play? You know, I've been filling MiG-21s here lately. I really have, and here's the TU-1. I told you it's a prop plane. I did pick that up. It's a very heavy. It's a TU-2 made out of solid metal instead of wooden airframes. You know what? I'm feeling frisky. This is probably one of my most favorite MiG-21s. One, because it's one of the premiums I've played forever of. And if you'll notice, it's got a 2-3 laid on missiles. I think I need to go in there and fix that because you can actually still carry four. Uh, da -da. We want to edit and put in another... Really, the radar missiles are much better, but why not just run two of those? I need to look at something real quick. Can, is that an additional... Cannon, or is that just tell me now to even have a cannon? I can use that because they used to have a cannon built in. Oh, that looks like it's an additional cannon. No, now you have to choose the gun pod. Hmm. The reason why this is a great MiG 21 is it's stupid fast. It's the 21, it's the MiG 21 MF engine, if I remember correctly. Uh, that's in another tree. Okay. No, that's 9.3 now. No, it's the R13 engine. I'm sorry. Excuse me, guys. It's been forever since I played it. You have to choose to take the cannon. Now, it used to come stock. I need to pick this thing up. This is this. These are the same exact frames. This one gets the lower-powered engine, which puts you over here with the first MiG-21F. Hmm. To give you just a minute, guys, I'm derping. That's two missiles there. What was so great about the PF? I thought this had the better motor in it. It gives it a ground pound loadout, really. All right, Gaijin, you've, you've messed up. Did they ever give this thing a skin? 
Uh, they did. They gave it. Oh, how much is that? How much is that? That's a really cool looking skin. It's better than that bare metal. It's be like 20 Gaijin coins. I can't spend any more money on this game. Nope, I'm broke. Can't afford it. <sighs> That's. <laughs> uh... Okay, guys, I quit screwing around. All right, so let's hop into here. So the MiG 21S R13 300, very good MiG, stupid fast for its BR. It's actually got the 10.0 or the 10.3 MiG 21 engine in it. Zero flares, so you're going to die to some IR missiles. Just bear with it. I'll go back to what I normally say. Back in the day, we had much less in the choice of what we brought to battle. Jet wise, so this was actually kind of a very good top dog if you knew how to play it. The trick was okay, so you before the missile changes, you either have four radar or four R3Rs, which are terrible. And there's the MS 25. Yeah, we're not where we need to be. We're not in Kansas anymore. Okay, okay. So you had to choose between four one or four of the other. Well, then they brought out where you could make combination, but you couldn't bring. Four. You had to choose between like two of one kind and one of another, which was one IR and two radar. Look how quick we go off the ground. Okay, but now you can have two of each, and I'm going to use my button on my thumb to actually uh, change it. I think it's the R. Is it the S? It's the radar. No, it is the R. R three R. What is our launch range and guidance time? So 21 seconds, so you want to do it under 10 kilometers, probably more like 6 to launch this. It only, it's only a 10G missile, but there's so many people that will hit on you. What's the radar range? So 30 kilometers. I had to make sure I was using the num key and not uh, the number 8, by the way. But look how quick we're going. And we did take full fuel, because you will burn through it. And now, with the advent of being able to go from 101 up to 110, you can make it fuel last so much longer. But we're not doing that. We want to hit on somebody. We want somebody to say, hey, it's a MiG-21, I can take this. You generally want to catch people up high. This is where your radar missiles will perform better. They will technically uh, go faster. They have less resistance. Not necessarily go faster, but they will travel easier. Turn a little bit easier. It's not like it's gonna add a whole G to it, but you know. We're over mock and climbing. Gaining just the tiniest bit of speed. Which we'll need. Uh, we want to be above five kilometers, in all honesty. Speed is king. And that's what you have to play in this thing. You have no flares. Something gets behind you, you're dead. Just accept it. I don't even know if you can get this thing anymore. I don't know if it's GEs or anything. There's an F5. Um, wow, yeah. So, just a few BR higher than we are. And this is what we want to do. This guy right here, it's T2. Yeah. He has no flares. He has no chat. He played it smart. He got out of there. This guy, on the other hand, did not. He's doing a full head on. We have a radar missile that's going to smack him. So, yeah. That's the trick that we used to use to grind the Russian tree with. Yeah. Because your other missiles are quite useless. Um, if they're asleep, or AFK, then yeah, you can kill them. They're 10G missiles. And they're very limited, very limited guidance time. So what can you do in this thing? You've launched your radar missiles, you've got a kill. Well, you're still a MiG-21. And you still have that great water cannon. I need to turn the radar off. So, that A-10 is probably dead, and we really don't want to get in front of it. The A-5s are going for the A-10. We need to go for the F-11. Yep, the F-3H, we're just going to dive, move around him. We're not worried about them. We're not even worried about using our missiles. We want to get guns on this F-111, who's definitely not going to be faster than us. I mean, look how quick we're going right now. We are reaching the limitations of airframe, but hey, guess what? We have breaks. We're going to get a lock on him, and we're just going to annoy him to death with the uh, hey, you've been locked warning. Under 1.5, you can launch it. Of 
course, he's got a million and a half layers, but we're not worried about that. This is what we wanted to do. Oh, I'll stay zoomed in, but more than likely that's going to be a kill for us because we critical his wing. And we're just going to air break down. Very maneuverable, we have tons of AOA, and we'll gain all the speed back. And unfortunately, I used up all those 200 rounds in that little burst. I had people behind me, and more than likely did. And he flat spun. Dirt all over that dude. And we're fast enough to get out of the way. We need to go land. There's a 104 looking for the short base over here to kill people at. And we're just going to go back. We're going to go back. Um, the 104 technically is faster than we are, but we're a MiG-21. Um, 6.2 gigs of RAM use, so you don't really need much for War Thunder. In all honesty. In all honesty. So. Uh, there was somebody that commented that they played on Mobile Hotspot there for a few years. I was living with family, taking care of them, and uh, I had to use my phone's hotspot. It had like maybe 1.6, 2 megabytes at best. It was literally in the middle of nowhere. Uh, yeah. But I make it made it work. I remember working offshore back in 2012, no, 2013. Uh, I had War Thunder on my laptop, and we had what was called a microwave radio band for internet out there. And it got, you know, close to a megabyte. And the latency was not the greatest. I think I was pushing 300 latency most games while playing. But uh, that's how I played War Thunder when I was offshore. Granted, I think in 2015 they did satellite upgrades to our communications building, and we actually ended up some pretty good internet. I wasn't on one of the lucky platforms, you know, like, uh, I think it was Augur. Augur or Brutus, one of the two of those actually got a, a really good internet package, and I was so mad because I, you know, called the other logistics guy over there, and he'd be like, yeah, they're all playing World of Warcraft in the galley. And I was like, cool, cool. Let me uh, hang up my satellite phone so I can play on my microwave radio band, but I made it work. So, a little fun tip, yeah. You make the best of what you have. And War Thunder was actually one of those games you could play on very limited equipment and internet connection, still to today. Grant, the requirements have increased ever so slightly over the years. Like, everything will. But you can still play it on a potato. You don't need a 4090. Guys, I will show you my graphic settings after I get off the ground. Um, I play everything on low, and I have a 2070. Mostly, I'm not going to last for ground battle, but I want to get maximum FPS. I'm not too terribly worried about how pretty the game looks. I played Dwarf Fortress back when it was still ASCII. I know I'm talking like a few years ago, I'm talking like 2008 or Um, I raided Mortal Warcraft looking at the ground during Wrath of the Lich King. I mean, I, I played on the bare minimum. I used what I had. So, let's go to options real quick. Graphics, I think most of it's low. Yeah, minimum. This is my settings, guys. Terrain deformation, I have it on high. Anti-aliasing, I don't ever worry about. I turn off water effects, turn off cloud effects. Turn off shadows, I don't care about shadows in a game. No minimum, so. And we win. And we got, what, two kills? So she still has teeth. So this is me trying out my new 32 gigs of RAM. Just checking out how much I'm using up. Unless I was only using six, but if I was recording and I had Discord open or any other tabs up in the background, it would cause me to blue screen, black screen, and just the computer would derp as hard as it could. But now I can actually stream on Twitch, which is what I'm coming to. So I'm going to go back and miss. I got to re-log into my Twitch account. Like at one point, I'm using all my stuff to log into it, but it's not linked to my email that I know it's linked to, so I've got to go back and do all that stuff. So I will be streaming on Twitch here eventually. I have the weekend off, so you guys will see me there. And, uh, yeah. Um, the name on there, I think, is just JJ. I go by Donnie in game. That's from <laughs> EverQuest days. I go by JJ in real life, and I go by JJ as, like, my handle. So I'll put all the information here uh, in the next video, not in this one. I've still got to fix my Twitch setup and all that good stuff. And we're going to max out on our, uh, our RAM so we can make it happen. But until next time, y'all, enjoy.